Hi, I'm John Holland, Public Information Officer from the Oshkosh Fire Department. Welcome to this edition of On Fire. What we're going to do today is walk through the house and show you a bunch of fire hazards that are probably at your house. So maybe take a look around, see if you see any of these, and most of them are very, very simple to fix, and we'll talk about that as well. Um, we'll start off right here with the fireplace. First of all, the fireplace is safe. There's nothing in front of it, um, no rugs, no anything. Um, you can see there's even a little tile thing in front to keep the heat away from the carpet. So we start off on the plus side, but things are going to take a turn for the worse very quickly. What we're going to do next is take a look on top here of the fireplace. You can see a bunch of candles up here. Um, first of all, a candle should never be on anything that can burn. Um, a wooden shelf, whatever. Um, instead, what you need is a non-combustible candle holder, stick it in there, and then also make sure it actually fits inside the holder. You don't want it tipped. Make sure it is a good fit. All right. Then, another candle up here. People think these are a lot safer, and they're mm, safer a little bit. Uh, but you still have to watch them. With any candle, you never leave the room when the candle is lit. Um, you blow it out even if you're just leaving the room, and especially if you're going to bed or leaving the house, make sure that candle is out. With the glass one, you still have to be very, very careful. Once it burns down to here, it's time to pitch that candle because what can happen is the glass itself can actually get extremely hot, can crack, and you'll have shards of hot glass shooting all over and with the carpet underneath, it's obviously time for a fire. First of all, you don't even have to use real candles anymore. They have LED candles. Um, this one not only will look like a candle, once it gets warmed up, it flickers a little bit. It also has a scent. And this one smells like raspberry. And since this is smell-o-vision, what do you think? All right. They also have little candle, little tea lights, and this one has a strange little feature that I, I just love showing off a little bit. Once it's on, um, you can actually blow this candle out. So it's on right now, and once I, <laughs> candle goes out. Um, I didn't think blowing out the candle was the coolest part, and you wouldn't want to lose, but here it is. Going along with the candles is obviously you need some way to light the candles. A bad idea is to put the lighter right within children's reach. Now I know there's no kids crawling around here right now, but you never know if a kid stops over. Um, this, this lighter is right within their reach. We blame kids for a lot of fires, um, but it's actually more of the adult's fault for leaving the lighters right there where they can get them. This lighter should either be in a drawer or up high somewhere where a kid can't get them. So I know it's convenient here for the person lighting the candle, it is also very convenient for uh, any child that would pick it up. Um, and especially, if you look over my shoulder here, we got curtains right here and at child height. Um, and we all know once you have one of these in your hands, it is almost impossible not to play with it. Um, what we're going to do next is we are going to head out on the deck where a lot of people do things that they really obviously don't quite think about. And um, they're very, very unsafe. And you'll see a couple things. Um, one thing before we head out there, we certainly have something here that is a problem that hardly anyone ever thinks about, and it's this little rower right here. This rower is right in the way of our second way out of this house. So you just got to obviously don't store it here. Um, put it somewhere away from that door. So come on out here, and we'll check this out as well. Okay, out here on the wooden deck, um, here's a mistake that a lot of people make is they grill out right on the deck. And, and I, I understand it. We're back to the convenience factor again. The kitchen is right there. The kitchen table, dining room table is right there. Um, but you are burning something on wood. The grill should be on a non-combustible surface, um, probably out on the driveway, sidewalk, um, somewhere where if the hot embers do fall, it is not going to start a fire. And then you have to be careful about where you dispose of your ashes. You make sure that they're out before you dump them in the garbage um, and you don't dump them underneath the deck. Now that sounds like, well, who would do that? 
but we have had a fire where that was their dumping place and it did start the entire house on fire through the deck. Going along with that, out on the deck, um, the smoker out here and um, wow, this is um, not an ashtray. And again, this seems like, honestly, who would do this? Um, the answer is lots and lots and lots of people. We have lots of fires um, started like this. And it's great that people aren't smoking in their homes, so nobody has to suck in that secondhand smoke. But even outside, you have to be careful. So instead of using this plastic pot here, a much better option is an actual ashtray. Um, and then going along with what we said with the grill, once this gets full, and I don't mean heaping, but once it gets full, your best bet is to wet, these, wet the ashes down and um, let them sit overnight, and then you can dump them in the trash. We're going to head back inside and see what else we can find that makes this an unsafe house. We're in the kitchen now, and if you're going to have a fire, this is the place where it's probably going to start. Um, obviously, you have the stove, the oven, the broiler. Um, this is where all the heat is. So starting off, we have kind of an odd one. Um, the toaster here should actually be unplugged when you're not home and not using it. Um, also, be very careful of what you put by the toaster and don't get it too close. This towel is here for um, cups to dry on, um, but you can see it slipped right in underneath there and you probably won't notice it in the morning when you're half asleep. All right, from the toaster, we are heading over here to the stove and there are lots of things wrong here. Um, the first basic thing is um, the handle hanging over the side of the stove here. If you're cooking, the handle needs to be inside so nobody walks by and spills the hot liquid on them. Um, we have a lot, a lot of fires. It is started by cooking. And cooking fires are always the number one cause of fires in Oshkosh. And again, it makes sense. This is where the fire and the heat is. But most of them are caused by unattended cooking. So if you have something that is either on the stove or in the broiler, you need to stay in the kitchen so you can actually watch it. Uh, going along with this, um, another thing with cooking, um, hot pads are fantastic for keeping your hands safe and we hope you use them, um, but you've got to make sure that you're careful where you place them. The top of the stove is not the place to place them and with the flat surface stoves it's much much easier to become careless with this um, and again you can just slide underneath there um, and you, you're going to have a fire. Just complete stove surface should be clean. First of all, make sure it's clean of grease. Um, second of all, the only thing that should ever be on there is anything that you're cooking with. Um, up here, this guy, he's got to go. And um, the salt and pepper, which you're looking at right now and you think, well, that's probably a good spot for it. But actually, it's on a burner. Um, that's a burner back there. Salt and pepper should be off of the surface of the range. Um, there should be nothing up there except for things that you are cooking with. So it should look like this. And um, we actually do have a salt shaker here, the salt grinder, that was up on the top of a stove and um, the person was making spaghetti and this scooted over right next to the pot and it started to melt. It wasn't noticed till afterwards. And the only reason I know so much about this was it was in somebody's house that looks a lot like me. So be smarter than me. All right, so we've gone through the kitchen and we've seen a lot of things that can start fires. Um, so in this house, they have little protection here in case there is a fire. They have a fire extinguisher. However, you can't see that fire extinguisher, can you? The fire extinguisher is actually down here and hopefully it never gets used. And obviously this one's not. It hasn't been, so it just keeps getting pushed further and further back. So if there were a fire in here, to get at this extinguisher, you would really have to work hard. Um, you'd probably bonk your head going in. Um, if you think of the things you have underneath your sink, 
you are throwing all sorts of like Clorox and Drano and whatever over your shoulder, you now have a little toxic puddle along with the fire. And by the time you get this out, it is gonna be too late. So it should be on the wall somewhere. It shouldn't be under here. It should be mounted. And then the question that we always get is, how do I stop my kid from playing with it? It's pretty tough, but you say, leave the fire extinguisher alone, knock it off. Now in the home office and um, in any office with computers and printers and things like that, you're gonna have a lot, a lot of cords. Um, what it shouldn't look like over by your desk is this. Okay, this tangled mess of extension cords is extremely dangerous. First of all, if you need to use an extension cord, you should only have one thing plugged into each cord. Okay, as you can see down there, that is definitely not the case. Um, if you um, do have to have all those cords down there, a much better choice would be a power strip. With that one, you can plug in as many things as there are slots. And um, if you have too much, everything will shut off. So the computer will shut off, the printer will shut off, the lamp will shut off all at once. You'll know you have too much stuff plugged in and you unplug one, turn it back on. And if everything works, you're good. If not, if it pops again, unplug another one. With these, these just get hotter and hotter and hotter until they start a fire. If you have multiple things plugged into an extension cord, um, Make sure, before you check, make sure you have everything plugged in tight. And then feel that where they all come together. Um, it'll be warm, hopefully just warm. Um, and it just gets warmer and warmer and warmer. With a power strip, you have many second chances. With those, you have absolutely none. Right now, we're in one of the bedrooms here in the, at the home. And... Um, Remember how we just talked about power strips? They're usually a great thing. Um, however, if you have an air conditioner or a space heater um, or anything that sucks a lot of juice, a freezer, a refrigerator, it should never ever be plugged into a power strip or God forbid an extension cord. Um, the heat is just way, way too much. There's too much juice coming off of there. Um, we had a fire in Oshkosh where it actually melted a power strip and you would think that it would pop it, it popped it, and it melted it. Um, going along with the space heater, our thing with space heaters is you give space heaters space. You need at least three feet around the space heater that is free from anything that is combustible. Um, make sure you never use a, um, space heaters in your home that where you have to add any liquid fuel, they have electrical ones, you still have to be safe. This one here, actually, if it tips over, it will turn itself off. Um, that is extremely important. And um, when you go to bed at night, make sure you turn it off before you go to bed. And I know the whole idea is to keep you warm while you're sleeping, but it's gonna start a fire. It is just that simple. The heat coming off of these is amazing. Here we are in the bathroom, and you would think in the bathroom, you're safe. There's a lot of water in the bathroom. Um, obviously not the case. Um, anything that's electrical can start a fire, and there's a big, big fire hazard right here in front of me. And it's these curling irons, and they're both plugged in. Okay, there is nobody here. Um, we just showed up to do this, and they're both plugged in. And they both might have the auto shut off on it, which most curling irons do these days. Um, but what if it doesn't? Um, we've all used computers to um, try to do many, many things and they don't always do what we want them to do. Um, so I'm, there are also cases where it's not gonna turn off. Um, and we do have fires with curling irons. Um, and here's one right here. Um, this was on a towel and it was plugged in and it started a pretty good house fire and it started right here just from the failure to unplug the curling iron. So when you're driving away and your friend, your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, maybe your husband, if he uses a curling iron, if he says, I'm not sure I unplugged the curling iron, you can roll your eyes at him, but please, please, please come on back 
and double check. In the other bedroom, we do have another fire hazard um, and, and most homes are full of them. Um, this is not anything out of the ordinary, but here's one that people don't think of too much. And um, here we have a Kindle that is plugged in and charging and there's nobody around. Um, same goes for laptops. Um, they can get extremely hot as they're charging. So you wanna make sure that when they're being charged, there is somebody here. And when they're actually finished charging, you unplug them. Once you have this unplugged and it is charged, you need to unplug the chargers. Um, the, what, cause what happens is they can get very, very hot as well. So you wanna make sure that once it's charged, you unplug it. Um, otherwise you have electricity running through this. And anytime you have electricity, there's a possibility for a fire. So I understand it's not all that convenient, but that little bit of extra time could be the difference between having a fire or not. And when you have things that are charging, and that could be a Kindle, a laptop, um, a phone, anything that needs their batteries recharged, it needs to be disconnected once the charging is done. You don't just leave the charger in the wall. We have been through this entire house and we found lots and lots of fire hazards. Fortunately, for the people that live here, they are very well protected by working smoke alarms and working carbon monoxide detectors. With a smoke alarm, you need to test it at least once a month. Make sure it works. This one's working just fine. It is hardwired in and there is actually a battery backup in case it loses power. So smoke alarm wise, we're great. Let's go check the carbon monoxide detector. The carbon monoxide detector is right here. It is reading zero. Uh, the test button is right here. And it's gonna go off a couple times, probably. There we go. And obviously that is working as well. Like I said before, most homes are filled with fire hazards and all of us have fire hazards in our home. This is not anything out of the ordinary, but please, please, please make sure you have the working carbon monoxide detector, the working smoke alarms. They could be the difference between life and death. And the carbon monoxide detector in this home is very important because not only is it, does it have gas heat and um, gas dryer, um, but it, the fireplace. Any fireplace off gas is carbon monoxide. So you need to have a working carbon monoxide detector. It is the only way you're gonna know there's carbon monoxide in your house. Here we are in the basement of this home. And one of the big causes of fire right here in Oshkosh is um, dryers. We have a lot of dryer fires. And one of the major causes of dryer fires is the failure to clean out the lint filter. And as you can see, this one has a lot. And it's not difficult to clean this out and you need to do it after every single load um, and it sticks to itself. So you just bring it around here, around there. And then actually every once in a while, you should rinse this out because um, you do get a little residue that is stuck in there. So we'll put that back in there. And then going along with the dryer is the dryer vent. And you can see here, this has got a metal dryer vent, which is fantastic. It is much, much safer than the little plastic ones that um, they have a little spring inside and they're, they're cheap in both ways. They are cheap expense wise and they are cheap with what they do. Um, and they're very, very unsafe. It is just plastic and there's lots of little spring in there. Um, going along with that spring, it gives you a lot of area for the lint to get stuck on and some lint does go out the vent. So you have to make sure that um, don't get, don't cheap out on your dryer vents. Get the metal ones, um, not the plastic ones. The flexible metal ones are fine um, as long as they're metal and you can, there are some that are very, very flexible to get it right where you need it. Um, just don't get the ones that are they're basically wrapped in it. It looks like plastic and cause it is. And the plastic obviously can melt. With the wire in there, it grabs onto all the lint. So it gets filled up with lint and instead of being blown out, um, it gets stuck right in that vent. And obviously the more lint you have, the better chance you have for a fire. 
Thanks for watching this edition of On Fire. Um, for more information, please visit our website. It is oshkoshfd.com. And if you look under the education tab, you will find more information on home fire hazards and what you can do to fix them. Um, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna head back in here and try to make this a safer house. And we'll see you next time on On Fire. <laughs>